Hi everybody, so um, I'm here with Anna today. We're on a walk at work and um, I wanted to try something. Um, I wanted to bring up an issue with her and get her opinion on it and then just kind of she'd be standing in for all of you to kind of uh, see what somebody who um, is just hearing about an issue would think about it. So I'm going to talk about the cannabis retail stuff that's going on in Oxnard. So right now there's um, a couple things going on with the retail cannabis stuff. So with um, the city of Oxnard, they've already approved manufacturing, cultivation, distribution, testing. The um, retail side of things, which is a dispensary that someone who's over 21, 21 or over can walk into and purchase cannabis. Um, those are coming up to committee on October 22nd, next Tuesday. And so um, there's a couple things going on. So. The Interneighborhood Council Organization, you have to listen to right? <laughs> I'm okay. trying. So the Interneighborhood Council Organization, they um, did a survey with residents to see what their thoughts were around retail cannabis, where they should go, what types of stores they should have, what types of shopping centers they should be in, that kind of stuff. Um, one of the big things was the distance, and that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So the distance that cannabis stores have to be from what's called sensitive uses. That's what the state calls them. Sensitive uses are anything that's like a park, a youth center, a playground, a church, um, somewhere where youth would naturally congregate. And 31 so flavor? 31 flavors wouldn't count. So, um, so the idea here is that if the state uh, mandates or they, they have a suggestion of 600 feet um, from any youth sensitive location. So you can't have a cannabis operation 600 feet or closer to any of those things I just named. So in the survey, the residents who responded to the survey through the INCO, they said that the minimum distance should be 1,000 feet or more, a minimum of 1,000 feet. And just so for some context, 600 feet is about a block and a half. So think about a city block, it's like 400 feet, and then like half of the next block would be 600 feet. So it's not very far. And a thousand feet isn't much farther, but it's an additional 400 feet at least. So that being said, um, the state says 600 feet. The residents are saying a thousand feet or more. And the city's kind of leaning toward the 600 foot thing, but I can see why residents said a thousand feet and they had some really good input about why that was. All right, so that's the first one. How far should it be, 600 or 1,000? But there's another layer added onto this. The planning commission, when the cannabis item came to them, they deliberated and talked about it for a long time, and they came up with, well, the definition of those sensitive uses, parks, youth centers, churches, playgrounds, schools, um, they said, why isn't a residential zone considered a sensitive use? Why don't we have residential zones in there? And the response is the state doesn't have residential zones as part of that definition. So you don't have to have a minimum distance between a cannabis outlet and a residential zone. So what the planning commission did was they said, well, we think that a residential zone should be considered a sensitive use and it's within their power to make that recommendation. So they did. So we have three things. Should it be minimum distance of 600 feet, a thousand feet or more, or should um, residential zones be included in that? So right off the bat, what do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no? Was that wrong? Is there any... Did I pass the test? So... Okay. So I think, seriously speaking, first of all, I'm not speaking for any of you. This is my opinion. Um, that makes sense because you said that I represent them. And so this is not. Represent people who are just getting information and then thinking about it. Yeah, just want to clear that up, just okay. my opinion. So the further the better. So I definitely go with a thousand feet or more. Okay, do you have any specific reason for why you feel that way? Because kids are kids, they're sneaky, they're mischievous, and it'd be easy for them to walk. And to the places and get whatever they need to get however they're gonna get it and then walk back to the park and hang out and do whatever they're gonna do okay they're gonna do it all right so the farther it is and then we all know kids are lazy 
I used to be. Well, I might still be. Anyways. I'd counter with adults are pretty lazy. <laughs> so we all know the laziness factor. So the farther, the better. All right. Can I also say, to build on that, um, so hopefully, my, my hope is that all of the retailers who come into the city of Oxnard are going to be good retailers who want to be a good part of the community and wouldn't sell to minors. All right. That would be my hope. And I feel that that's um, something that the city's really working hard to make sure happens. Definitely. But yeah. I did say kids are mischievous and sneaky. And well, the, the businesses won't sell to minors. Um, the businesses, if they're good businesses, won't even want minors anywhere near their store. Um, okay. Minors can still get their uh, ads, their uncles, the stranger hanging out, walking mm -hmm. in, walking out to buy it for them. Um, just like alcohol, cigarettes, it's happened in the past. Good. With and there's, other stuff. There's actually going to be regulation in place to try and help mitigate that too. So that's good. Good, but that doesn't stop it. That doesn't, it doesn't. stop You're right. people. And so that's what I'm just thinking. The farther, the better. Okay. What All was right. the other one about the neighborhood? All right. So now residential zones. Should a residential zone be considered a sensitive use, meaning you cannot have a cannabis outlet within 600 or 1,000 feet, whatever it ends up being, you can't have it within a certain distance of residential zones. Right now, there's no regulation on that um, in the city's uh, proposal in the um, planning departments. And let me show you right now, where we stand right now, so right across the street from us is a residential zone. And I'm going to guess it's maybe um, maybe 75 feet away from us, just across this four-lane road. And um, so let's say that this is all commercial right here. All of this in the city of Oxnard, if there was no regulation around that, you could have a dispensary that close to a residential zone. But I see why they made it like that at the state level. But the planning, or I'm sorry, the planning commission is suggesting that they include residential zones in that sensitive use definition. So before I give you more information, what do you think about that? Mm, that one I am perplexed about. Is that a word? Perplexed? Confused. That is. I they mean the same thing. Good job. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure perplexed was a word. But anyways. What is um, now? <laughs> we'll answer Manuel's question in a second. Who, um, What's that dictionary that adds words into the it's dictionary? The thesaurus, but what do you think about the okay. thing I just asked you? <laughs> okay, well, because you said my word is a word now, so we need to email them and let them know to put it in. Anyways, so that one confused me because I feel like there may be residents that legitimately use it and need it. Mm -hmm. And so it'd be smart, I guess. I don't know for who, for the businesses, for the city, I'm not sure for who, but it'd be smart to have um, at least one store in, I guess, nearby or accessible mm -hmm. for adults because, as we said, they're lazy too. <laughs> <laughs> but so, again, it comes, you know, I think it also depends on the neighborhood or the area in Oxnard because, again, you know, the kids, they're going to do what they're going to do. They're going to find a way to do it. And if it's that easy just across the street from them, I mean, okay. So like, you know what I mean? It's like, well, Manuel Herrera brings up a really good point. He asked, what about places where it's mixed use, where you have like, um, houses or residents that are really close to a commercial business or sometimes a commercial business on the first floor and then like, um, okay. residences on top. All right. You ready? Yeah. So the planning commission, um, they made that recommendation and the, um, planning department went and figured out what would that look like. So in their, um, in their staff report that's going to the council committee next week, the planning commission, I'm sorry, the planning department said, if we go with residential zones as a sensitive use, that will reduce the number of eligible parcels that can have cannabis businesses from like 600 and something to like 100 and something. So like one sixth of the number, we'll have far fewer places that would allow them to have business. Yes, you have a what's question? A what's a parcel? Uh, it's the property, the, the place. Like this is a parcel right here we're walking by, like, right? This, like a shopping center, like the store? Yes. Okay. Can you just say shopping? Like, can you talk stupid for me? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so. I thought a parcel was a package. Like. There can only be, it goes down from 600 some places that can have cannabis businesses. It goes down to 100 and something places that can have cannabis businesses within the city. And I know that sounds like a lot when they're only going to have maybe eight businesses to begin with, but it really restricts how many places those can be at. And let's say that it ends up being somewhere that's not really easily accessible. Say it means like they have to go way out in the industrial area over by like Pacific Avenue. Well, oh. if there's no bus routes that go out there, what if somebody need, doesn't have transportation, needs to use public transportation to get there to buy like um, cannabis for medicinal use, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't it, want to do that. I mean, they wouldn't want to do that. Yeah, so that makes it makes it much less accessible to people. And um, I mean, I can't say if it's right or wrong, but um, in my personal opinion, it is pretty restrictive. And um, we really don't want to make things harder or more complex than they already are. We've gone sense. this long with the planning department doing a lot of you know their work and evaluating everything, doing their studies, getting resident input. So we wanted to make sure that, um, you know, all that work is not for nothing. And I see what the planning commission was getting at. I totally do. Um, I just think that maybe they weren't fully aware of just like how restrictive it would be if they added that to the definition of sensitive uses. So anyways, um, so I hope that answers your question, um, uh, Manuel. And then the next question is, is that your wife? She is so beautiful. Well, if you think she's beautiful, then I'm going to say yes, that this is my wife. <laughs> so yes, this is my wife for sure. All right. So for, now. <laughs> for the video, for the video, <laughs> Just kidding. it's not that kind of video. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I am a wife. So anyhow, uh, I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> Lastly, um, I received word from the uh, chair of the INCO. I did a presentation about that survey and what people thought about it, um, what people thought about cannabis. They had some really good input. We did that presentation and the planning department was able to take notes from that. And I've heard them refer to it a few times, but I don't think the council has ever seen the presentation because this happened after they stopped recording the INCO meetings because of the budget cuts. So I received word from the INCO chair that um, I should record a video um, for the uh, committee members from the council and send it to them um, to review ahead of time to, so they can hear firsthand what residents thought about cannabis uses and um, how they should be implemented in the city, what their thoughts were, what their input was, and they can take that into consideration as they review what the planning commission said and as they review what the um, planning department says. So I will say on the next go around here next week, the planning department is recommending that the city council or the council committee not go forward with the um, recommendation from the planning commission to include um, residential zones in the sensitive use. So that's their recommendation. We heard what Anna thought that it sounds like she agreed with most residents that a thousand feet or more seems to be a fair distance. Let me let you know right now, 600 feet 600 feet is exactly the distance the state says that an alcohol outlet can be from a school or park or any sensitive use. We all saw how that went. We see how that worked out, just as far as density goes, especially when you look at the south side of the city or over um, just outside of downtown, like south of Woolley. So anyways, so a little bit more distance can help with the density in the future. Right now we're only gonna have eight, but it also helps if maybe in 10 years, a whole nother council comes in. Let's say it's people who want to like add more density. Well, we saw what happened with alcohol and tobacco and we have an opportunity here to kind of be a little, have a little bit more control over that. And we decide as a res as a city, as residents, if that's something we want in the future. Anyways, so that's it. Thank you all for watching. Peace out. <laughs> Thank you, Anna, for your help and your input on that. Thanks for listening to me, guys. Yes. Again, just my opinion. Yeah, it's her opinion, but it was a good one if I say so myself. Anyways, thanks everybody. Talk to you later.